Making humans a multi-planetary species is like buying life insurance. This is a very interesting perspective, but how much longer will people have to wait in order to sign up for a premium, and how much will it cost? Elon Musk just had his third visit on Lix Fridman's podcast on the 28th of December. The broadcast has attracted more than 1.3 million views and thousands of comments. Speaking of the dream of the colonization of Mars, many people think that this is a pipe dream with a series of barriers, but what about Musk's opinion? Let's find out in today's episode. Let's start off with this. Of all the dreams and aspirations one could have, why did Musk's ambition point to the red soil of Mars? Lex Fridman asked during the podcast, what do you think SpaceX will land a human being on Mars? After a long period of silence, Musk replied, best case is about five years, worst case, 10 years. But speaking of his motivation to do this, besides his love for humanity, he also doesn't just want to have flags and footprints on Mars and not come back for a half century, Musk really wants humans to build a sustainable presence on Mars. In order to pass the very important great filter, I think we need to be a multi-planet species, which may sound somewhat esoteric to a lot of people, but eventually, given enough time, he added. Indeed, humanity has been facing too many threats. which right now are the dangers of the COVID-19 pandemic and in the future, extinction may be on the horizon. There is a certain probability that something bad will happen on Earth. That could be something that humans do to themselves or an external event like what happened to the dinosaurs. If none of that happens and somehow magically we keep going, then the sun is gradually expanding and will engulf the Earth and probably Earth gets too hot for life. This destructive event by our sun is expected to happen sometime in 5 billion years. It's a long time, but that's only 10% longer than Earth has been around, Musk said. So if you think about the current situation, it's really remarkable and kind of hard to believe Earth has been around for 4.5 billion years, and this is just the first time in 4.5 billion years that it's been possible to extend life beyond Earth, and that window of opportunity may be open for a long time, and I hope it is, but it could be open for a short time. I think it's wise for us to act quickly just in case it closes, Musk told Fridman during the podcast. So this is the time when people must act to save themselves. We can also bring animals from the earth and plants to Mars and breathe life into the planet and have a second home with life. But in order to perform this task, there has to be some difficulties that we must face. So what are these difficulties? First, it's easy to see that the high expense of performing such a feat of mankind's safeguard is a barrier. Starship is the most complex and advanced rocket that's ever been made. But he explained, there is a certain cost per ton to the surface of Mars where we can afford to establish a self-sustaining city. Above that, we cannot afford to do it. Right now, you could not afford to go to Mars for a trillion dollars because no amount of money could get you a ticket to Mars. So minimizing cost per ton to orbit and ultimately cost per ton to the surface of Mars is the first thing that Musk must do. Because you don't just need the rocket and the launch and everything you need like a heat shield guidance system, you need deep space communications. You need a landing system. This is obviously way too expensive to create a self-sustaining civilization. So we need to improve that by at least a factor of a million per ton. In 2017, Musk claimed it will take 40 to 100 years to achieve a fully self-sustaining civilization on Mars. He admits cost is an obstacle to overcome. You cannot create a self-sustaining civilization if the ticket price is $10 billion per person, he said. He suggests bringing down the price by using reusable materials, refueling in orbit to maximize the payload of the spaceship, and producing propellant on Mars, ideally from methane which offers the best cost per unit mass. Secondly, SpaceX is still in a vicious circle of the Raptor crisis. Not only that, SpaceX's orbital Starship launch was delayed to at least March of 2022 due to slow FAA reviews. There's no denying that Musk has given people great hope for the future, but achieving that dream is fraught with difficulties and doubts. It's said that Musk regularly makes bold predictions and promises, many of which have come true, but not all. Clearly, Musk can revolutionize almost every area he focuses on, but his timeline is unreliable. If Musk promises to deliver you pizza within 30 minutes, you can go out to dinner now because your pizza probably won't be delivered until next week. All jokes aside, back to the journey to Mars. Let's just believe that humans can set foot on Mars as Musk claims. 
but can we build a self-sustaining city, or will people die after a few months, even a few weeks? Is gravity a stumbling block? The surface gravity of Mars is just 38% that of Earth. Although microgravity is known to cause health problems such as muscle loss and bone demineralization, it's not known if Martian gravity would have a similar effect. What about the atmosphere? Is it unsafe? Atmospheric pressure on Mars is far below the Armstrong limit at which people can survive. Habitable structures on Mars would need to be constructed with pressure vessels similar to spacecraft, capable of containing a pressure between 30 and 100 kPa. The atmosphere is also toxic as most of it consists of carbon dioxide, which takes up 95% with 3% nitrogen, 1.6% argon, and traces totaling less than 0.4% of other gases, including oxygen. How can humans survive with only 0.16% oxygen? Additionally, this thin atmosphere does not filter out ultraviolet sunlight, and due to the thinness of the atmosphere, the temperature difference between night and day is much larger than on Earth, typically around 70 degrees Celsius or 125 degrees Fahrenheit. But what about soil, water, and climate? The Martian soil is toxic due to relatively high concentrations of chlorine and associated compounds, which are hazardous to all known forms of life. Therefore, growing livestock to provide food for people is probably a luxury. Mars has no rain. Water on Mars is scarce, with rovers, spirit, and opportunity finding less than there is in Earth's driest desert. The climate is much colder than Earth, with mean surface temperatures between 186 to 268 Kelvin, which is negative 87 to negative 5 degrees Celsius, or negative 125 to 23 degrees Fahrenheit. The lowest temperature ever recorded on Earth was 184 Kelvin, which is around negative 89.2 degrees Celsius, or negative 128.6 degrees Fahrenheit in Antarctica. So how long can humans endure in such adverse living conditions. Just a few fundamental factors have shown the current impossibility of large-scale colonization on Mars according to Musk's ambitions. Is the goal of 1 million inhabitants and a self-sustaining city on Mars in the next half century possible? So far, that is still a controversial question. But what's your take? Do you think that this is a possible goal of Musk's? Do you think we'll be able to inhabit Mars in the next 50 years? About a million people there? Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. That's all the information we have for you today. If you like what my team and I are doing and would like to continue supporting us in a huge way, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Another way you can show us your support is by giving us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and hitting the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. And as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.